In this video, I'll get the planets on their orbits and circling around the Sun. I'll zoom in and take care of the Earth first. I also need to make one more orbit for the Moon, but I need to wait to do that so I can link it to the Earth correctly. To start, I'm going to get a helper object in so that the Earth can be axially tilted by 23 degrees and then spin on that axis, which gives us our seasons. I'll choose Create and under the fifth button are helpers. Helpers in 3ds Max are objects that may not necessarily render or be visible in a finished movie, but help us with things like rigging, where we bring things to life by putting skeletons in, or otherwise making them movable. I'm going to make a dummy, and click and drag, and put in a box. I'll call this dummy Earth Dummy. The idea in a dummy is it simply exists as a point. That way other things can refer to it and we can separate the rotation of the Earth from the spin around the Sun. Now I'll get this dummy on the path. I'll choose Animation, Constraints, and Path Constraints. 3ds Max gives me a drag line and I'll go over and pick Earth Orbit and there's a tooltip that flies out that shows me I'm on the right one. Once I select it, what 3ds Max does is put a keyframe at 0 and 100 frames. That's the extent of my timeline for now. So if I scrub forward on the timeline by dragging the time slider, the Earth, or the dummy actually, orbits around once. Now what I need to do is get the Earth linked to that dummy. I'll select the Earth and then align it to the dummy using the Align tool and aligning it center to center on the X, Y, and Z. I'll click OK. And now I will link it over. First, though, I'll put in the axial tilt. I'll press E for rotate and zoom in. The Earth's axial tilt is 23.4 degrees. I'm going to rotate it on its Y axis, here highlighted in yellow. I'll put in down at the bottom 23.4 we can see that the Earth cants back, and this will give us our seasons. Now when I link it, by clicking on Select and Link, and clicking and dragging from the Earth onto the dummy, the Earth can spin on its, axi on its axis, even though it's tilted, but rotate around the Sun, giving us our seasons. Now I'll animate the day and the seasons correctly, and then get the moon on. First, the dummy flies around in a hundred frames. As we can see on the PDF here of planet statistics, one Earth orbit is 365 days. I'm going to reduce this down and say that 365 days takes 37 frames. That way when I get to Neptune's orbit, I'll be dealing in 6,000 frames instead of 60,000 days. With the dummy selected, I'll select its keyframe at 100 on the timeline and drag it over, looking on the bottom of the UI to see how far I'm moving. Here's 37 frames, or approximately 365 days. Now when I zoom out, I can see that if I scrub that forward, the Earth zooms around once. I'll make the Earth spin, and finally get its moon orbit on. I'll select the Earth, press E to rotate, I'll press Alt and right click to access the quad menu for coordinates and transforms for animation. I've switched over to the local axis. This way, as we can see here by this rotation tool, I can rotate it skewed over on its axis. What I'll do is auto key it, pressing N for auto key. And I'm going to scrub over one frame. What I need to have happen is that the Earth spins around once in every day. However, being that I've compressed my yearly cycle way down, this Earth should spin around once basically every frame. I'll press A for angle snap and rotate on the blue Z axis here, watching down at the bottom to make sure I'm spinning 360 degrees, giving us one day. Now I'll turn off auto key. I've got one spin in and I'm ready to get the moon on and then I'll make these keep spinning for when I stretch out the timeline. I'll click on Create and Shapes on the command panel. 
Under Shapes, I'll choose Ellipse, and I'll click and drag out an ellipse for the moon's orbit. I'm going to make it slightly oversized so we can see it. I'll click on the Modifier panel and give this a length of 2 and a width of 1.8. It's almost a circular orbit, but not quite. As our model gets bigger, we can get more precise on this. I'll click on the Align tool and align it onto the Earth. Again, aligning center and center on the X, Y, and Z. I've actually aligned to the dummy. Although the dummy and the Earth have the same center, I can pick either one. I'll click OK and name this Moon Orbit. Now I'll link the orbit on. Again, I'll click on Select and Link and click and drag from the Moon Orbit onto this dummy. This way it'll follow that orbit all the way around the Sun. Now I'm ready to get the Moon on its path. I'll select the Moon and choose Animation, Constraints, Path Constraint. And I'll zoom in or just click on the Moon Orbit. There's the Moon orbiting. I'll select the keyframe at frame 100 and pull it back here. The Moon needs to race around the Earth in roughly three frames. Our lunar month is 27 days, or give or take, three keyframes. I'll pull it back here to frame 3. Now to make these keep cycling, and then I can repeat this for the other planets. Down on the bottom of the UI, I'll open up the mini curve editor. I can even detach this window and make it free. I'll open it up and make sure I've got selected all of the pieces that need to keep animating. With the moon selected, I'll hold control and pick the Earth, and then I'll hold control and pick the Earth dummy. I'll frame them all by clicking on Frame Horizontal and Frame Vertical. I'll pull open this trackbar window a little bit more. Zoom out, and there's my keyframes. We can see here, when I slide the timeline to the right a little bit, that this takes place in a fairly short distance. What I need to do then is to select all of the keyframes by dragging a window around them. They show up selected in white. And under Edit, Controller, I'll choose Out of Range Types. This lets me set the pre and post keyframe motion. Whether it's constant or holding, does it loop, or repeat from the same position. I'll choose Relative Repeat, so it keeps looping from where it was. I'll click OK, and now we can see those lines extend out. When I close this trackbar, zoom out, and scrub on my timeline, I can see the moon racing around the Earth, the Earth spinning on its tilted axis, and the Earth orbiting around the Sun. I can do this with the other planets, selecting them, using a path constraint to bind them to the orbits, and then adjusting the keyframes to be the right number of days. Finally, with them all done, I'll go back in the Curve Editor and set them to relative repeat in their out-of-range type, so they keep orbiting forever and ever, or as long as I'd care to have my simulation going.